Hello, everybody. I'm Kerry, and today we're going to be talking about building intelligent applications on Azure Container Apps. Azure Container Apps is a service tailor-made for building cloud-native microservices. It's a high productivity option for developers who are looking to build intelligent applications into their architecture, and particularly for those that are looking for potentially a more microservice solution. Today, the demo that we're going to be looking into, um, we're going to be seeing how we can use Azure Container Apps in order to simplify the developer experience and make it easier to build those AI components. We're going to look into things like microservice best practices, observability, scaling, and a little bit more. So with that, the application that we built here today and we'll be showing is a digital content platform. So a place where customers can go, they can input a prompt, and it'll generate an image for them and they can get it back. Now, the specific example that we'll be using is with uh, Dolly and Azure Container Apps on the back end in order to you know, help, you some, help you develop your applications. So if we look at this uh, architecture in particular, we have three different microservice components here. So we have a UI front end where customers can go in, they can interact with a digital content platform, put a prompt in, as well as receive the image back. Next up, we have a middleware API controller. This is where we're going to be sending and receiving messages through service bus uh, pub sub topics, um, as well as sending and storing and retrieving images from the Azure Blob Storage. Finally, we also have an AI content generator. This is where we're going to be using Dolly with OpenAI in order to generate our images and send them to our application. All three of these different applications are all going to be created and deployed within the same Azure Container App environment. This means that they're going to share an execution, isolation, and observability boundary. And it makes it very easy for all our applications to communicate with each other. In addition, we're going to be using Dapper. Dapper is a portable event-driven runtime that is an entirely open source CNCF project. It makes it really easy. Uh, it makes it a lot simpler to create uh, microservice-based architectures. Oh, and there's my note on that. Um, in particular, uh, Dapper seamlessly uh, incorporates a lot of uh, best practices for building microservice components. Um, and for this application, we are using Dapper PubSub in order to have communication with our service bus. And, also, and then in addition, we get with that automatic service discovery, MTLS security, as well as resiliency. Another great thing about Dapper is that you can adopt as many components as you want or as few. So in this case, we've also decided to use a Dapper binding to communicate with the Azure Blob storage. Um, now, with Azure Container Apps and Dapper, we simplify the Dapper experience for you by providing managed support for Dapper. We do things like having a simplified Dapper API, as well as having automatic versioning and seamless updates to your Dapper application. So now that we've seen like some of our architecture, and I've told you a little bit about how easy it is to uh, develop with Dapper, let's actually look at some of the Dapper code. So in here, we can see that we have our application and we have three different components. We have an AI content generator, an API controller, and a front end. If we go into our API controller here and we go into program.cs, uh, you can see here that we have an API called results. And for this API, um, we are calling, we're communicating with Dapper's Painter Pub Sub component. Um, and this is a Dapper component that we've created which communicates with Service Bus. So what this component is doing here is when we get an image created from our uh, content generator, um, it's going to send it to Service Bus and Dapper is, and our app is going to be able to pull it from uh, the Service Bus topic using Dapper here. In addition, we also have an output binding to the Azure Storage blob. And here, what we're doing is we're taking that image and then dropping it into that storage account. And you can see here how easy it is to get this all set up and running, right? So it's only a couple of lines of code in this one API in order for us to be able to do integration with two different Azure services. And so that's great, right? We've looked at our architecture, what we're building, 
Um, we've looked a little bit at the different pieces of code that we're uh, implementing here. Uh, but how do we deploy, right? Deployment is oftentimes pretty hard. Um, the great thing about Azure Container Apps is we simplify a lot of that deployment for you. Um, so we, so Azure Container Apps is a container-based service, and that means that we're language and stack agnostic, right? So you can take your Linux-based container and we'll deploy it for you, we'll run it for you in the cloud, no additional setup. Um, and we also provide a lot of native tooling and integration for simplifying that experience. So we have integration with GitHub Actions, where you can just create a container from your GitHub repository and deploy it directly to Container App. And we also have integration with Azure Pipelines. Today, what I'm gonna be showing you is how you can do simple deployments from your CLI on your machine. So the first command that we could do, oh, sorry, before that, actually. Um, there's a few different components that we're gonna talk about um, that are used by these commands. So the first one here is you're gonna see that we have these three different applications. And in every single one of these applications, we have a Docker file. And that is going to inform our applications, uh, our deployment, how we're gonna, what kind of image we're building and what we're deploying to our actual container app. In addition, we have this infra folder here. We have all of these bicep uh, files. And these are all resources that we're gonna deploy alongside our Azure container app to Azure. So now if we want to deploy all of this, how could we do it? We could run a simple command such as azd up. And this is going to deploy both our container apps, it's gonna containerize our images, and then it's also gonna deploy all the associated resources in Azure. So that storage blob, that service bus, everything is gonna be created alongside. Uh, this command takes a little bit of time to run, so I ran it beforehand, so we already have some Azure, uh, resources deployed in Azure. Um, but I did wanna show you guys another way that we can deploy that is similar to azd up, and we can do it for a single container app. So we can run this command here, AZ container app up um, for our front end application. And what this does is it builds a brand new container image um, from the Docker file that we have here locally and puts it up into the cloud and deploys it to our Azure container app instance that is in the cloud. Um, just for the sake of a demo, I'm gonna, before deploying it, we wanna change something, right? So welcome to the Contoso digital content generator. We're gonna change this to the revised one. Make sure we save that and we can run that. So now while that's running though, let's go take a look at Azure and the deployments that we already have. So here's the resource group that I deployed earlier using AZD up, and you can see all these different resources that we have here. Um, you can see that we have the checkout app, front end, as well as orders, um, checkout being the API controller, and orders being the backend um, app content generator. In addition, we also have our resources such as service bus as well as our storage accounts. Now, we wanna see our app in action, um, but before we do so, let's make sure that we're looking at the logs and making sure that everything is running correctly. Um, so here, we have a bunch of tools inbuilt into Azure Container Apps that make observability easy for when you're doing your development. In particular, we have Logstream here um, which is going to allow us to see in near real time the uh, execution of our application. Now that we have this up and running, so we can view all that, let's go to our actual front end application. Oh. Front end application. So here we have our application, and we'll go to the application URL to pull it up. Here you have a blog uh, generator, and Welcome to Contonus Digital Content Generator. And we're gonna get started. So here, we can input a text prompt and we'll do something like a beautiful summer day with fountains in the background. And now, when we click Create, this prompt is sent through the API controller back to the backend um, through Dapper and then returned um, through uh, service bus topics again. So here you can see we have our image. And if we go back to our checkout application, you can see all the different messages that we have um, that we've been using for debugging as well as just seeing what URIs uh, we're pulling. Um, 
In addition, if we go to generate content to our application, um, we can go to my content now and we can see all the different applications that we've created before by pulling from the Azure Blob storage using a dapper binding once again. Now, that's really cool. We have our application up and running. We can see it, we can monitor everything that's going on, but how do we scale our application, right? Um, we don't wanna just have one service, one server up and running, we want multiple potentially, right? Um, so particularly for this application, um, it's a digital content generator. Potentially the front end is gonna see a lot more traffic than the back end, right? People are gonna come in, they're gonna create their images, but then they're also gonna wanna view and see other people's images as well. So how can we do scaling? Well, we can go into the front end application here and we can go to scale and replicas. And what's really cool about scaling in Azure Container Apps is that you can have multiple container apps within one environment, but each of them can have their own unique scaling configurations. So this front-end application can have entirely different scale rules than the checkout one. Um, but now if we go in here and we go to edit and deploy for scaling rules, you can see how easy it is to change the number of replicas that we're gonna be scaling to. Um, here we're set to have a minimum of three instances right now and 20 maximum. We can really easily configure that to be an additional amount. And then we can set a scale rule here um, and we'll just enter basics, uh, just scaling. And if we pick a type, HTTP scaling, and we can set how many concurrent requests. If we add all of that and we create it, um, it's that easy to get a scale rule set up and to change how many instances that your container app is gonna be on. Um, in addition to the horizontal scaling, how many replicas your container app can be on, we also support a bit of vertical scaling. So if we go back to our resource group here and we go to our container app environment, we can see we have this feature that's called workload profiles. In workload profiles, we still have the basic consumption uh, environments of apps that we already had, um, but we also are able to configure and change the amount of size each container can have uh, for processing for number of cores as well as the amount of memory that's available to it. Um, so this is intelligent application that we're building, right? Um, the front end, maybe it doesn't need that big of a server, it doesn't need that many cores, doesn't need that much memory, but since we're adding that AI component, we might need more processing on that back end, right? So what we can do here is within this, and this is all within one environment still, right? We can have different uh, amounts, different size containers for each application that we're building. So for the order processor, the back end, which is doing the AI content generation, we can have a much bigger, um, a lot more processing than the front end. So we can go all the way up to 16 cores and 128 MB on that one uh, application. Now, um, in addition to that, now we've been going through all of our application and all the different pieces of it, but we've had a deployment going on in the background this entire time, right? So let's go check in on that. So if we go here, um, back to VS Code, we can see that our deployment has completed. Um, what this means is we've submitted a new revision to our application and we deployed it. Um, however, we've been working with this application the whole time, nothing's gone wrong, right? We have zero downtime deployments in Azure Container Apps with revisions. What this means is as you're spinning up a new container, as you're deploying that new container, we'll keep your old one running until that new one is fully provisioned, fully ready to accept traffic, and then we'll make that switch. So that's uh, zero downtime deployment. Um, so we've seen all this, these pieces uh, in action, and what are the next steps? So. What I want you guys to do is to go to our docs uh, to give us to learn more about our uh, product, as well as go to GitHub issues if you guys have any sort of feedback that, and any questions around a product that you wanna learn more about, um, we're happy to hear it. Um, so today we've looked at how Azure Container Apps can be great for um, creating artificial intelligent components um, and how it integrates with Dapper for microservice best practices, as well as providing uh, scaling, observability, and um, version sort of management uh, improvements. Um, so with that, that's all I have. Thank you.